Your Most Avid Reader by Bibi Berkey. Dear Monica, may I address you so informally? In fact, may I ask if that's your real name at all? So many writers have pseudonyms, don't they? And I thought perhaps you might write under another name for another type of book, and that being such an avid reader of your work, I might have the pleasure of finding other sublime stories to enjoy. Wouldn't that be wonderful? You must have gathered, reading only so far, that I'm a huge fan of your work. I sometimes wonder if I might be your most avid reader, though how such a thing would be measured, I don't know. If they come up with a device for gauging a reader's enthusiasm, I'd like to volunteer myself to give it a test run. (laughs) I really ought to get to the point. Sorry. I was wondering if you have a moment to explain how you came up with such a splendid idea. To write a series of novels with the same protagonists, but with each book set in a different historical era... To have a love story spanning British history is truly inspired. But what makes it so gripping, of course, is the fact that they so often brush past each other, Dominic and Marianne, without one even knowing the other is there. It's sheer agony for the reader, but so compelling. I often keep talking to them in my head long after I've shut the book. Making them pursue each other through time is about as thrilling a literary device as I've come across. Having said that, the idea is not enough, and a certain quality of writing, which you seem to produce effortlessly, is equally important to the mix. As a mere reader, I have no right to make suggestions, but I'm emailing you because I'm gripped by an idea that I think might be useful as you plan your next instalment. You almost certainly have many, many plot lines sorted out long before you begin writing your books, so I appreciate that a suggestion from me might be more irritating than helpful. I won't go into detail here in case you're not inclined to hear it. My idea, I think, could lift Dominic and Marianne into an intriguing new world, at the same time presenting the reader with a fascinating and controversial period of British history. Would you hear me out? A brief note to let me know one way or another would be appreciated. Of course, if you find my ideas lame or insulting to your intelligence, then we'll leave things there. I'll be satisfied with reading your excellent books... Sometimes a person gets an overinflated view of her usefulness and needs to be knocked down to size. I apologise for any unwelcome assumptions on my part. With best wishes from your most avid reader, Hilary Keeler. Dear Miss Keeler, thank you for your letter and your kind words. It's always a thrill to hear from someone who loves my books. It's what makes me carry on writing. I do hope you will enjoy the next instalment of the Clement Street series. With best wishes, Monica Malone. Dear Monica, please forgive me for writing to you again, but I do it with the belief that maybe you didn't actually read my first email. Perhaps the number of letters and emails you receive is so overwhelming that you employ someone to read them for you, and mine got lost in the mass of adulation. It's not hard to find your email address, by the way, otherwise I wouldn't have been so bold as to approach you like this. I totally understand if you'd rather not have anything to do with me. However, if on the off chance you never read my email, may I just mention what I think might be an interesting development for Dominic and Marianne? I think it'll bring even more suspense into your already galloping plot lines. My other point was the boring old question I imagine you get asked all the time. I wondered how you dreamt up the idea for the series. Did it just arrive in a flash? And so once again, I sign myself off accurately. Your most avid reader, Hilary. Dear Miss Keeler, Yes, I'm afraid you're right. I get far too many emails these days to address each one in person, and so my assistant must do it for me. Most, as I'm afraid you've discovered, get a stock reply. In fact, your second email would have suffered the same fate had my assistant not randomly opened it and sent it to me with a... What shall I do with this? I read it and found that I had to respond. 
You ask about how I came to create the Clement Street series and how I go about it. I knew I didn't wish to put my characters into well-known historical situations like the Great Fire of London or the suffragist movement. No, I was determined to pick less well-known events and to enter them entirely. This way, I could bring to readers not only a compelling ongoing love story, but also a lost slice of life. I research the obscure sides of our shared past. I wish to surprise. I wish to reveal. But I cannot deny that after five books, I'm beginning to wonder what area to explore next. And no, my mind is not banked up with plot lines, as you suggest. But never mind, something always crops up. It's a delightful enterprise to unearth the new or the forgotten. So, to put it gently, it would have to be a pretty special idea from you to meet my exacting criteria. That's not to say I'm not grateful. Your kind of letter is always a pleasure to receive. Please do let me know what you had in mind, but don't be disappointed if I have to be blunt and reject it. That's the nature of the beast with writing. Constant rejection. You have to steal yourself in this game. With best wishes, Monica. P.S. I put my email on my website because I do so love to hear from my readers. It means a lot to me. Though you can imagine how much work it gives my poor, very part-time assistant. Goodbye. Dear Monica, how fantastic to get such a full reply and to hear your voice, as it were. Wow. Your email writing is as compelling as your fiction. I understand, of course, that you may wish to give my idea a wide berth. I rather expect it, actually. It's just that when it comes to obscure and tiny popular movements in British history, I happen to have a bit of form. I was a very amateur historian for many years, while also working in museums up and down the country. The less mainstream the historical event, the more interested I was. The very paucity of information was what spurred me on. There was nothing I liked more than making my own often serendipitous discoveries. Your wonderful leading characters have really caught my imagination. I admire how this every pair is so deftly fitted into new settings. The idea has this beautiful elasticity about it, stretching not just their story, but how we view history as a whole. Bloody marvellous. But how did you hit on such an idea? Did it take years of throwing things backwards and forwards in your mind? Or was it a eureka moment? Did anything particularly inspire you? Anyway, my humble suggestion was the clash between the Hesiod racial group and the radiant wanderers, religious fanatics, on the Lincolnshire coast in the mid to late 18th century. Are you familiar with this moment in history? Have you already discarded it as useless to you? Then please bin this email at once and we'll call it a day. But just in case, the Hesiods had an extraordinary racial lineage they were thought to originate from the Pavlodar region of Central Asia and may have had Jewish and Indian roots as well, which apparently made them very striking to look at. Imagine Marianne with long dark hair, brown eyes and a plain white chemise or petticoat. The ones who arrived on our shores were led by a young woman, would you believe? And here's the extraordinary twist. The local religious sect that squared up against them was led by women as well. These two groups constitute just about the only examples of matriarchal society in modern British history, albeit played out on a very small scale. Fascinating and convoluted story. The Hesiods had a revolutionary social setup and a surprising architectural bend. Oh, wait till you picture the bizarre homes they built for themselves. I'll stop here so that I don't bore you any further. I can see that rejection for a writer must be galling, but that you become inured to it. I might be facing a form of literary rejection myself right now. Thanks for hearing me out. I could go on and on about this subject forever. Your most avid reader, Hilary. Hilary, let's not beat about the bush. I'm quite excited about this. I'm not saying it's something I can definitely use, but it's got promise. That's how everything starts, with the tiniest seed of an idea. But where does one go to find seeds?
Sometimes they just drop into one's lap from a passing bird. I must hear more about these striking Amazons and their confrontation with the religious women. You've painted a vivid picture in my mind already. It will probably come to nothing. End in tears. Yours more than mine. I'm used to it. You can have no idea how frustrating this line of work can be. You don't choose it. It chooses you. And then it punishes you for having had the temerity to do so. But come on. Out with it. Tell me more. And sharpish, please, so we can move on and forget if it all comes to nothing. Yours, Monica. <sighs> Thank you, Hilary, whoever you are. We're only back in bloody business. <laughs> Hilary was played by Rebecca Charles. Monica by Georgina Sutton. Your Most Avid Reader was written by Bibi Berkey, with sound editing by Mark Lingwood. It was made by Tempest Productions and brought to you with the kind support of Rattlesnake Books, an established seller of books, maps, ephemera, art and curiosities Rattlesnake Books can be found on Instagram, Etsy, ABE Books and Biblio. Thank mm -hmm. you.